I read this yesterday, uh, Matt's review in Jacobin of Governor DeSantimonius' book, uh, The Courage to be Free. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the review there. Ron DeSantis uh, hates elites except for himself and his ruling class buddies. So yeah, this is something we talked about a little bit um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I think, in the show, uh, kind of with regard to uh, Clarence Thomas, uh, that connection. Uh, but uh, at the beginning of your review, uh, you have. Do we ever get the elites quote? So he says. Uh, all right. The word elite, I love this so much, does not signify yeah. someone of tremendous aptitude, great wealth, or major achievement. Man, that is fucking convenient. It signifies Super. someone who shares the ideology and outlook of the ruling class, which one could demonstrate by virtue signaling, i.e. speaking the in language, and by seeing Americans as subjects to be ruled over, not as citizens to be represented. Uh, these elites do not include some individuals who reach the commanded heights of society. And then he goes on, this is what we talked about last week, to, uh, yeah. to name I wonder if they, Thomas as a non-elite. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that is just like, I, I, I kind of feel like in, in De Sanctimonious' own kind of totally artless way, he is like putting... Like he is like really just kind of saying out loud something that is like a core belief of like the right wing in general that like you don't understand half the shit if you don't understand this is how they see it. Oh yeah, definitely. It's like I pointed out uh, in my review. If all that being an elite means is that you hold to the ideology of elites, not only is that a little bit tautologous, but it also means that the teacher in West Virginia in coal country is earning you know thirty fucking two thousand dollars a year. If she wants to teach about race relations in this country, honestly, she's a member of the elite. Uh, but Clarence fucking Thomas takes five hundred thousand dollars vacations with his billionaire benefactor. He's not an elite because he just doesn't think that way, right? Um, yeah. He doesn't wonderful. Share the ideology and outlook of the ruling class. He hasn't even read the nineteen seventy eight statute that requires federal judges to disclose gifts of more than four hundred fifteen dollars. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so, yeah, the book is kind of fun that way because it wraps itself into so many pretzels of logic to try to get the argumentative outcome that he wants. Uh, and DeSantis is a smart man, so I get the sense that he's doing that intentionally. And it's just kind of fun to see all the bullshit laid out just very transparently, right? It's like, yeah, I'm just going to read a final eat to mean – Whoever doesn't agree with me about things, no matter how poor they are, and it does not include anyone, no matter how rich they are, as long as they also think like me and deal with it, right? Uh, At least yeah. I, I, no, sorry. I'm, I'm just curious uh, how you would differentiate it, maybe a little bit from like Trumpism, of because you know Trump also traffics in blatant contradictions, but it feels it feels like there's just something a little bit more. Uh, like there's more verb to it, you know. It's not like yeah. like it's like a little more exciting for some reason. Uh, I can see the appeal more, but this just feels like he's like like you said, he's actually kind of like he sees the problem, so he's just like, all right, well, let me you know this mealy mouth way redefine it. You know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like uh, there's differences there, but I'm trying to tease them out. Well, I, I think fundamentally, DeSantis is just a much smarter person than Donald Trump, but that's part of the problem he's going to have politically. Uh, because Trump, whatever else you want to say about him, was usually so dumb that he will just speak from the hip and there'd be nothing strategic or political about it. Uh, and there was a kind of, I don't want to call it honesty, but authenticity, uh, at least to his personality in what he said. Because you were getting him unbridled whether you liked it or not. When you read DeSantis's book, uh, it's filled with a lot of the same grandiosity. Uh, and parts of the book are really funny when he'll go through these very banal details about his routine and treat them like they're moments of great significance that testifies to his greatness as a person. But the whole thing feels a lot more calculated, a lot more, you know, massaged, uh, a lot more workshopped. Uh, and it kind of misses, I don't want to call it the charm, the, yeah. no, the I mean, charm of Trumpism. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's right. I mean, like, I think that, look, I mean, Trump, don't get me wrong. There's there's clearly a sense to which Trump is an idiot that like DeSantis isn't. Like he, there are 
there is a dimension along which Trump has like the mind of like a very small child. Yeah. Like uh who's um like just the sort of terms he puts things in, you know, the like uh you know, it's very unfair. Right? You know, it's like like a just a just sort of this sort of very yeah, it's it's like the it's like the kind of sociopathy you get from like a really small child too, you know, that's like there's just this yeah, like petulant. has it learned yeah, exactly, right? All that's true. But there is a kind of intuitive brilliance to Trump that like, you know, he he is there is a certain thing that he does that he's in a weird way aware of and not, but that like he he does like perfectly. And you know, I think the respects in which you know, and and somebody like DeSantis doesn't have that at all. No, and I actually think the respects in which in which uh, DeSantis is smart are just not going to be helpful. I mean, this is like I, I saw somebody say this on Twitter. It's like I don't know when these guys are going to learn. You have to stop trying to run nerds against a brilliant insult comic. <laughs> yeah, because this is the thing. Uh, like there are points where he tries to be more highfalutin uh, and. This is why I think I described it as like Trump with a thesaurus. Uh, like he goes on this little excursus about originalism uh, and judges, uh, and it's really bad, right, uh, from an intellectual standpoint. Um, because, again, it's very clearly trying to have it both ways. On the one hand, criticize liberal judicial activism and say that all judges should do is interpret the law, but also you know, get judges that will stick it to the liberal elites, which is actually a quote in the book, right? Uh, and you're like, as argument, this is just – complete waffle uh and surrounding waffle with fancy words like originalism and jurisprudence just really makes the whole thing go down bad in a certain way uh trump wouldn't have any of that kind of bullshit he's like i'm gonna set up the most conservative judges you've ever seen so conservative and you know what when they get angry at me i'm gonna appoint another one you know what i mean i'm gonna appoint somebody who's even more conservative I just wouldn't give a shit about trying yeah. to dress this up in some kind of flowery ostentation, right? And I don't want to say that I respect it more. I don't even want to say it's more honest because Trump is such a profoundly dishonest bullshitter, right? But again, it has that kind of weird residual id-like quality uh, that DeSantis just can't really capture. Authenticity yeah. is a good authenticity is a good word, at least to his own impulses and instincts, right? Which is like, yeah, I guess it's like that's sort of what makes a good actor, you know. Uh, it doesn't. Totally. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that the actor is actually the part that they're playing, right? But they're they're drawing on real things from themselves, as opposed to this. Like, yeah. Filter. Yeah. Thing. I guess it also just it's like DeSantis's whole thing is so. I mean, he's just kind of a tryhard, right? I mean, like he's he's just yeah. uh, like it, it's just so labored and rehearsed. It's great to be here, and you know. I I just before we get into the meat of, of what we're doing, I just want to you know make it clear to everybody, you know, when we say uh, don't tread on Florida or let us alone, uh, we mean that, including on your gas stoves. You're not taking our gas stoves away from us. That is your choice. Yeah. My favorite thing about this, as somebody, you know, speaking as a uh, long time Florida man. I, I lived in Miami for six and a half years. Um, nobody has a fucking gas stove in Florida. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, every now and then, I find something that makes that reminds me of my good old postmodern conservatism thesis. Right, uh, been a while since I've wheeled that out, but reading DeSantis's book, uh, there was a really striking juxtaposition. Uh, so some people might know the term, uh, the shot heard around the world, uh, usually associated with the start of the American Revolution, an event of pretty great historical significance. Uh, people also refer to it, uh, you, you sorry, refer to the shot that uh, was heard around the world when they talk about the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand uh, that kicked off World War I. So about as important a historical event as you can get. Uh, Florida man uh, appeals to the shot hurled around the world to talk about his fucking war with Disney, right? And I'm like, man, what a come down, right? We've gone from American Revolution and the great world to now being like the most cataclysmic event of this world is my fucking war with Mickey Mouse because I'm drawing the line here. There will not be gay Disney characters, uh, not in my fucking state, not in my fucking country, right? Uh, just this extraordinary banalization uh, of any notion of historical significance. Uh, and the fact that it's said with a really kind of straight tone, 
just makes it really pretty funny, right? Uh, it's the same way I think he really does seem to think that he's a Tom Cruise character uh, at points and actually thinks that it would be a good thing uh, to be a Tom Cruise character in 2023, right? There's something so kitsch about this that I kind of appreciate it, but not in the way that you can appreciate Trump because he's kind of winking at the camera. This guy is so sincere about his own bullshit that – you just the smell of it wafts everywhere and everything that he does. It, it it has a bit of like a almost like an Amy Klobuchar energy, like when he held up the signs, you know, that like yeah. super ineffectual Democrat energy that like you can. And this is interesting too because uh, the the Jeb Bush comparison is interesting because uh, that that Charles made because there's a certain type of person that works really well in one state, right? Of like the gov of like the functionary of the party that's kind of just seems like a dorky mm -hmm. tryhard. And then it just doesn't translate very well. Uh, I mean, like, I was looking it up, like, Jeb Bush, mm -hmm. uh, he really crushed uh, his, you know, at least a few of his election, or, you know, uh, at least the first one to become governor, right? So he, like, owned in Florida. And then when he went on the national stage, he really sucked. Uh, and, like, I, I have, a, you know, a childhood friend. I'm from Florida, too. That's just like, yeah, Ron DeSantis is just like, whatever you want to say, he really managed the affairs of Florida really well. I didn't get any specifics on what he did, but like that was, he's, you know, he just said, he just said Ron did it really well. Uh, no, but... he did a terrible do job with COVID. And this is also what pissed me off about the book. He's like, you know, only 80,000 people died uh, in Florida. And I'm like, it was funny, like, only 80,000. I mean, like, they have a, it's like, it's like, I don't know why we're even talking about that. If that's, I mean, if only 80,000 people died on your walk, sounds to me like you did an awesome job. Yeah, I'm like, more fucking people died in Canada, which is an entire country with a twice the population uh, as Florida. Like, it was a fucking shit show, right? Uh, so don't be sitting there like, well, it's only 80,000 people, right? They're just normal human beings, not me. Uh, I'd be, he's clearly popular. He won a commanding uh, majority in the last election. Uh, I'm sure that, that a lot of people in Florida have good reasons for wanting to vote for him and they're pissed off at the status quo and stuff. But yeah, don't fucking tell me the straight face that Ron DeSantis is a man who's winning big victories for the people of Florida. The biggest victory that he's won has been against fucking woke Disney. Uh, and if you can sit there with a straight face and you're telling me that the great confrontation is our time is whether or not two animated princesses are going to be kissing uh, one another in the future, then I got to say that your priorities are completely out of whack. Like, just the fact that all this stuff is, like, trying to appeal essentially to right-wing Twitter, it's like, yeah, like, okay, I mean, you get a lot, you you do a good job getting slow claps from, like, right-wing politics nerds, but, like, you know, that's not most people. Like, that's not most people who are going to be voting in this election. Like, the, uh, like if you're just, like, a regular-ass Republican person out in the world, you know, it's like, I mean, what Trump's doing is going to appeal to you way more than that. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, like, the thing is, you know, Trump is the king uh, of being a conservative asshole and blowhard because it comes so naturally to him that he doesn't even need to think about it, which is a real advantage since that means he doesn't need to think, right? Uh, DeSantis really has to ponder and labor uh, and consider how to more effectively be an asshole. And well, you got to give him credit. You know, he's worked at it hard uh, and he's managed to transform well, himself into a right wing asshole through sheer effort. Sleeps for four hours and gets up and works out and, you know, and yeah. then like spends two hours scrolling Twitter to see what right wingers are mad about. Exactly. But you can't. There's fucking working hard at something and then there's raw talent. You know, there's Salieri and then there's Mozart. And Trump is the fucking Mozart of being like a right wing asshole. Right. He doesn't need to try. He doesn't need to work at it. If, if, he, if, he, if he somehow made it out of a primary, I could see like I feel like him versus Biden is just a much better uh a much better opponent for someone like to say, you know, the Santos where they're both kind of, you know, could argue, try to take this more moderate tax, but because he has to go against Trump, like you said, he's trying to do both where he's like uh, trying to take up every culture war Twitter thing, but then also be like, but I'm also the more moderate person. You know what I mean? And I, I don't, I, it's, it's really hard. Well, and he can't, and he, and at least right now, I mean, maybe he'll find his nerve on this eventually, but like, Right now, he clearly feels like he can't criticize Trump. That, like that would be um, that, like, because the second he starts criticizing Trump, he's siding with the libs. Can't, yeah. can't do that. Like, he, like he would be pissing away 
his whole appeal if he did it, but it's like, okay, but then also you can't state the case for you instead of Trump. So I don't like you just sort of do these like weird half criticisms around the edges that just kind of make you sound whiny. Before we let go of the meatball manifesto and, and move on to the last thing we'll talk about tonight, I do um, I do want to talk I, I do want to go back to the war against uh, you know the shot her around the world against uh, Princess's kissing. Uh, that because um, in his contemplation of the evils of Disney wokeness, he uh, he arrived at a epiphany that, on the face of it, sits kind of oddly with his his politics. Here we go from big tech to traditional corporations. These private institutions wield an enormous amount of power over society. And sometimes even collude with the government to do so. Thus, elected officials need to wield authority in a way that protects individuals from these powerful institutions. For years, the default conservative posture has been to limit government and then get out of the way. This, there is no doubt much to recommend to this posture when the institutions of society are healthy. But we have seen institution after institution become thoroughly politicized. In a free society, individuals are not overwhelmed by concentrations of power in government or in civil society. Uh, I don't know, Matt. Uh, you can tell us what's going on here. It kind of sounds like our boy is struggling with uh, some insights that would uh, fit more naturally in the pages of Jacobin than in a uh, uh, Republican campaign book. Oh, absolutely, right? But this is, again, done in a very pretzel-like way. Uh, so... Sean edited this lately, but my uh, original take on this is is really quite something that DeSantis feels he needs to lecture the Republican Party uh, on the dangers of private government or private concentrations of power when more or less everybody got this 250 years ago. Uh, I mean, fucking even liberals like Adam Smith uh, and the Wealth of Nations were talking about the dangers of private concentrations of power. So got on them for taking that long to figure that out. Uh, but there's a kind of appropriation of left-wing populist rhetoric in this respect, uh, where he's trying to mobilize animosity towards big tech, big culture industry, uh, in order to get the base behind him and present as a man of the people. Uh, but he makes it very clear that the problem with concentrations of private power isn't concentrations of private power. Uh, it's not the domination that flows from that, certainly. The problem is when these concentrations of private power decide to propagate ideologies that DeSantis disagrees with, uh, because like I pointed out in my review, uh, their job is not to tell people what to believe. That's his job, right? Uh, and he's going to do that to the hilt. Uh, and so the only things that he targets strategically are those institutions that he perceives as propagating some kind of woke uh, ideology that's damaging to conservative sensibilities. Uh, but look at his substantive policies, right? When it came to things like a $15 an hour minimum wage in Florida, uh, which you think be a very basic way of protecting an extremely vulnerable community from domination by very large companies, which are prone to paying, you know, starvation level wages. Ron was like, well, no, not time for that. Right. Uh, doesn't like unions either. In fact, he spends an awful lot of the book just railing against teachers unions uh, for all the trouble that they cause. So let's just say we should take his populism uh, and his critique of, concentrations of private power with about as big a grain of salt uh, as you possibly can, right? Uh, unless, again, your corporation uh, is having to, you know, has a picture of two women kissing uh, in some way, shape, or form that it's spreading to the public, you'll be absolutely fucking fine in the state of Florida. Exploit away. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>